Good morning and welcome to the Monday morning devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. We're still going through uh, the book of Revelation. We're in the, the seven letters to the seven churches there at the very beginning of, of the book of Revelation. I, I uh, hope you had a, a good and, and happy Christmas. Uh, we did. We had a, we had a great time. Um, and so we're ready to kind of jump back into the swing of things. So if you have your Bible, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, and while you're turning there, just a, a, a quick reminder, uh, John is writing to writing these seven letters to these seven churches um, that are experiencing trial and tribulation within the church and from outside the church. And John himself is experiencing trial and tribulation. I mean, he's on the island of Patmos. He has been exiled uh, for preaching the gospel. He's being persecuted for preaching the gospel. And he's writing these seven letters to these seven churches, um, uh, warning them, uh, commending them, exhorting them. Um, and it's, it's not John himself writing these letters. It's the Lord Jesus Christ writing through John, telling John what to write uh, to these uh, to these seven churches. And so in these seven letters, uh, we are to uh, learn something ourselves as a church and learn something ourselves as individuals. Um, and, and, and what these seven letters, what these seven church, what these seven letters are doing, excuse me, what these seven letters are meant to do is to cause us to take a mental um, uh, and, and, a, and a heartfelt inventory of our own lives as a corporate body and as individual Christians. Are we um, living out the whole gospel in our whole lives um, for the glory of God? Uh, are we being what uh, Christ has called us to be uh, before a watching world? And so if you have your Bibles, let's go uh, to Revelation chapter 3. And I'm going to read uh, verses 1 to 6, just six verses. And this is the letter that was written to the church in Sardis. And beginning in verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still, you, yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father. And, his, and before his angels, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is an interesting letter because um, notice how Jesus identifies himself. Remember, uh, each letter begins with a custom fit or a relevant way in which Jesus reveals himself to that church. So what, what Jesus does is that he looks at uh, the situation in each church and then he presents himself uh, in accordance to the situation that he finds there. And so here he says, um, uh, and to the angel of the, of the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Remember the number seven means wholeness or completeness. And the seven, seven spirits of God is a phrase uh, normally throughout the book of Revelation that refers to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who, who comes and makes the church alive. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes and regenerates the church, sustains the church, points the church to the gospel, gives them a passion for the gospel. Um, and immediately we, we, we know that, that this is the problem. Here's the problem of the church in Sardis, that they are not living in the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, look at verse, uh, uh, the latter part of verse 1. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are indeed dead. Um, I, to kind of put it in our modern context, I imagine this as a church that has a squeaky clean, um, cool, hip, trendy website. Um, they have many, many, many programs. Uh, I mean, it looks like a busy, bustling, active church. Um, but in the end, they aren't. Uh, they, look, they, they look like they're active. They look like they're alive. Um, and, but, but they... Uh, they, they are not uh, living out the gospel. They're not, 
they're not active or alive in the right things. And so therefore, they're not living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, they, uh, in, in fact, I, I would even say this is a church that has capitulated uh, to the culture that they're, they are, they're active. They are, uh, they're, they're, they have a great website. They have many programs, but, but none of these things that they're doing are pointing people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, in fact, look at, um, look at verse two, wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die for I have not found your works complete in the sight of God. Uh, skip down to verse four. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. Uh, I did a little research earlier this morning on the city of Sardis, and 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 in uh, John's day and time, said the city of Sardis was known to be uh, not a great city. <laughs> um, a lot of crime, a lot of immorality there, um, and so it's quite possible that the church in Sardis had begun to capitulate, had begun to uh, begun to bend to the culture uh, in Sardis in order to be more attractive uh, to the culture. And that, that's why uh, Jesus says to John, or, or he's writing to the church in Sardis, uh, yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. This may be a, a, a poetic way of saying people who have not bent their knee to the culture. Look, church in Sardis, you are active. It looks like you're alive, you're busy, you have so many programs, um, and, and people uh, know your reputation as being alive. When they look at your website, they're like, wow, look at what's going on at this church. They look, they look so alive, but yet when you take a deeper look, uh, th there's no gospel there. There's no gospel. There's no there's no uh, calling people to repentance. There's no talk about sin. There's no, um, th there's no lifting high the, the, the bloody... Uh, wrath-absorbing, beautiful, glorious cross. Uh, the 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 resurrection of Jesus Christ is called into doubt. I mean, it, it sounds a lot like the denomination, the Presbyterian denomination that many of us came out of, really. And so he 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 warns them. He says, "Wake up, wake up." Verse two: Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of God. And and, he, and several times he says, "Repent." Repent, repent. And here's the grace here that we need to take a really close, close and hard look at ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, is there any, any part of our hearts, any part of our minds, any part of our bodies where we have capitulated to the culture, where we have uh, bent toward the culture as, a, as, a, as opposed to leaning into the gospel? Um, is there any part of our hearts where, where, where the culture is, is sitting on the throne instead of Jesus Christ? Um, and, and then we need to take a look at our church, our own church, and ask, what can we be doing to be all about the gospel in every form and facet in our own uh, church and, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and body here? Uh, and and if, if we're lacking in our own personal lives and if we're lacking in, in our church, then we need to repent. And the word repentance means not just feel sorrowful over, over something we've done that is sinful, but the word repentance means to turn around and walk in the opposite direction. It means a, a complete and utter renovation of our lives to walk in the opposite, in, in the opposite direction toward Jesus. And that's, what, that's what Jesus here is, is encouraging this church to do. And the warning in verse 5, the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments. Notice the the, the uh, contrast between soiled, ga soiled garments and white garments. The one who conquers, the one who repents, will have their garments white. In other, in other words, wash white. In other words, the one who repents will no longer look like the culture. The one who's walking toward the gospel, the one who's seeking to live out the gospel, the church that's seeking to live out the gospel in everything that they do and everything that, in, that they say will not look like the culture. It will not sound like the culture. Um, and so when you look upon them, they will not have soiled garments, but they will have white garments. Now, because they are moral people, because they are good? No. It's because they are repenting people. It's because they are joyful people in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's because they are confessing their sin. It's because they are seeking uh, to work out their salvation in fear and trembling. It's because they are lifting high the cross. It's because they are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because they are proclaiming the gospel in, in, in every facet of their community. And so they are, their, their garments are white, not because they are pure people or moral people, 
their garments are white because they have not capitulated to the culture and but instead they have capitulated to the to the pure and whole gospel of jesus christ and so jesus says the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and i will never blot out his name out of the out of the book of life i will confess his name before my father before his angels and that's interesting i will confess his name remember i said uh, jesus identifies himself to a particular church in a relevant way that fits that church's situation and here i would even argue that the promises that jesus gives at the end of each letter fits uh, that church's situation here this church looks alive they have a reputation for being alive but they never confess the name of jesus they 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 uh their, their theology is is shallow and 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 uh, not flexible, but capitulating and and, uh, and bending and, and uh, you know, uh, lack of a better word, liberal, <laughs> very liberal, very progressive. Um, and so you, you you go on their website and once again, they look active, they look alive, but where's Jesus in any of this? Where's the gospel in any of this? And so they're not confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus says, look, if, if you if you refuse the uh, the uh, the influence of the culture in your church, and you start living out my gospel, my good news, and all of life. You you repent and you talk about sin, and you talk about the cross, and you talk about the resurrection, and you point people to me. Then I will confess. If you confess me, then I will confess you. And that's 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 a that's a. <laughs> I read that this morning. I was just baffled that Jesus is going to confess my name like before the Father. You know, Father Jason Mentor, is mine. As I live my life and I say, hey, world, Jesus is mine. Now, it's, it's not a favor. You know, Jesus is like, hey, listen, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. No. What Jesus is saying is he's saying, I will merely announce unto the Father what is natural about you. I will merely announce to the Father what's been done to you. As you announce to the world what's been done to you, to the world. In other words... Jesus is going to announce to the Father, Father, I died for Jason. And the Holy Spirit has regenerated Jason. And he is walking with Jason. And Jason is living for me. No, not perfectly by any stretch of the imagination. Of my, no. But he's seeking to, he's striving to live out the gospel. And he's, he's loving my grace. He's doing that as I am seeking to live out the gospel in all of life. In other words, what, what, what Jesus is saying is, is this. He said, if you um, repent and confess me before the world, then I will confess you before, before my Father. And I basically what, what that is, is that it's a living out of our union with Christ. Those who are not united with Christ will be united to the world. But those who are united with Christ will be united with Christ and confess it before the world as, the, as Jesus confesses them before the father that's the promise it's a beautiful promise and we want to live that out in every 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 part of our lives in our hearts and our minds let's pray father thank you so much for your son thank you so much for what he's done for us and god i pray that we confess your son we profess your son we sing the praises of your son to to this world that desperately needs to hear it as your son confesses us to you Father, help us to live out the gospel in every in everyday life. I always seem to ask your son's precious name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, please let me know uh, how you're doing. If you need anything, we're praying for you. I hope to see you soon. And uh, in the meantime, uh, God bless.